Hello there everyone, my name is Oliver Gamer3 being a, uh, part of Team Gym, which is an important thing of my title that I should say. And uh, this is gonna be a bit some something different than that I usually do. Uh, of course this is on my original channel to G3 and not on Gaming Remembers, but since I figured I have a decent technical level, uh, level and abilities in editing, so... You know, why not I show you something that I do every now and then. Of course, this isn't, say, a professional, you know, tutorial. I don't know how to actually interact things uh, very well. I, I don't know every short keyboard shortcuts and uh, stuff of that matter. But I do know enough when it comes to compression, te uh, technical mumble jumbos and how you just cut, in general, an episode. So that can give you a basis on how you do things. Now keep in mind, this isn't specifically a how you should do it. It's more of how I do it and how I deal with, say, uh, Trevor's videos and mine. So I have examples for both of them. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to build an episode from the ground up. Now, of course, I'm not showing actually how to record the part because this is something completely different. If I wanted to, uh, here you go. Skyward Sword, I, I divide my stuff into bins, went into complete stuff, a completed episodes that I just am uploading and keeping back in, until they are published, uh, the non-completed episode, which basically I send them to Trevor whenever I need additional voice work, so I send them online so he can repeat the lines and then I'll get back the lines so I can edit them in. Of course, this isn't, you know, there's plenty of unstuffed done here but that's basically it uh, all my audio bins which I separate into additional voice work so every time I need to say uh, do the five voice or something like that this is where I keep my bin commentary uh, additional voice work that I usually play so something like all these nice I don't need this let's get rid of that of course music I got this in a separate thing uh, a separate bin I, I just call music and now I go to Zelda and hey look at that it's got what sort of system by the goddess I would tell them like these of course, most of them just go and get them online, which, please, don't steal music. I have the right to, but that's because I'm a terrible person. Um, of course, you you want a separate video bin, just to say that you have something. Uh, an additional... Don't I have one? That's weird. Okay. There you go. So, usually, I also get an image bin, uh, picture frames, and, and all of that stuff. So, I can keep basic imagery that I know that I'll be using fairly often there. Uh, most of the other stuff I just got, you know, on a separate thing, like here are gifts. If you want a monkey gif, there you go. Isn't that beautiful? I also got the wow meme. Where is the wow meme again? Yeah, random videos. There you go. Wow! Ain't that fucking cool. Okay, so let's get back to business, shall we? So, to begin off, in Adobe Premiere CC 2015.4, which I believe is the version that I'm using right now. Yeah, it just shows right there. I don't know why I didn't see it. So, of course, the first thing you want to do is actually open a project. And from there, I'm, I'm just going to show you the basis of it. I'm going to get it afterwards. But basically, you have three uh, windows that you have. First off, name your project appropriately. If you look into my bins, it's basically separated into episodes. In my PP bin, which is uh, just a reference for Premiere Pro, so if I need to get to Photoshop, uh, Encore, Mini Encoder, by the way, I use the Adobe Premiere Suite in general, uh, which is excellent. Uh, it's really easy to get into. It's a real solid program. It's actually a professional one, since I'm doing actual publicity uh, Live, live TV stuff, and you know, I get contracts for uh, publicity and TV, web diffusion, and other stuff along these lines. I, that's the program I use. It's a really solid program. There's tons of things. There's there are tons, ton, thongs. Yeah, there are ton of things that people just don't know about professional or even semi-pro program that they just don't use different advantages and thus most people just like hey what program do you use I don't know I'll use it but you know just tell me so maybe I can learn uh, anyway um, basically my PP file this is one you want you need a PP bin just to say you have something to refer all of your project 
projects in because what Adobe Premiere does is basically it puts your file, you know, your project file, and then creates three, uh, two auto BIM, excuse me, the one which is auto save, which basically every, I think, recording 10 minutes, which you can set uh, to your own liking too if you wish to uh, make it save every five minutes, you can do that, um, which is all the auto saves of the project files that you have. So, say you're on the project for more than 20 minutes, then it does just like a backup file if there's anything that's happening. And the other one is a video preview file. What this does is essentially render all of your all of your video material because since this is an online editing program and, and it's not offline, necessarily you need to render out videos uh, if any changes are made to the actual uh, video footage so rendering is basically essential if you want to make your computer run better but there's a way around it it still kind of sucks so just be careful like most of these are kind of big like this is a single gigabyte which you know compared to if you if you were filming something in raw or live action it's it's not as hefty as this but base it's scale it's still kind of hefty like 15 megabytes of data that that's kind of, that's kind of hefty and over time with all of the fades changes that you can make it kind of takes a lot after a while so uh, I'll say every time your episodes go public or anything along these lines get rid of them they can be kind of hefty right now it's I'm kind of fortunate because this one isn't that hefty but you know it's going for over 90 gigs of data which you know like I said isn't that much it's it just it's kind of hefty after, after a while. Just keep your stuff in a specific bin. You know, just to be nice. And those uh, are just, you know, they're just things that I know to find. No, I gotta get something at one point or another. With all that said, now let's get back to the actual program, which is gonna be Premiere CC. Now, the first thing you're gonna see is this. Name your stuff, go into your files, and you know just make sure everything is set off properly so you'll never lose your thing once that's done just say yes I said no but you know what I'm saying and the other thing you got to do after your destination folder has been chosen you got to go into working disk you know the the thing that actually send all the stuff to the right folder and you need to make sure that everything is sent to that specific folder for since I chose P, um, the Legends of the Skyward Sword PP folder. Now everything, videos, audio, uh, previews for audio and video, uh, you know, auto saves and stuff like this. That just like I said, it's gonna send it there, but you gotta make sure it's actually sent there because there might be times when it goes to its automatic file that Adobe Premiere uh, installs automatically on your uh, root root uh, hard drive, which is not the place that you want them because you'll be searching them for a while if that's the case. Uh, general, you most likely don't need it because most of the time you just build a sequence out of the video elements or you can just have greater options in the actual sequence settings. So just don't care about it from there, just hit OK. In this case I'm saying no because I already have my beautiful file which is right here. And now we have open episode 42. The first thing you're gonna do once you do that is create separate bins just to say that everything's in order. In my case, in my case personal, I usually do one for the audio, any picture file, any sequences. Uh, maybe I'll boost that. Yeah. So uh, I do one for the audio, picture files, any, any kind of picture files, so JPEG, PNG, GIFs. It all goes in there. Audio for anything that just uh, that just have no kind of video streams. Sequences is actually the one that's a bit more confusing to most people. Why do I have this? Uh, since Adobe Premiere doesn't work on multiple timelines or doesn't create on multiple timelines, it's like if you create a new sequence sequence every time. And since you can insert actually sequences into others instead of having like 15 bajillion amount of sequences on this top of the section. Uh, I'd rather just have them in a separate bin so I can choose them at my leisure and it's just easier to copy and paste 
uh, video data from actual sequences without missing the subsequence. Uh, besides, if you want to fuse elements though, it creates a subsequence and you can just put it there, name it appropriately so you never actually be lost about it. So just sequence bin is actually the most important, but it's the one that most people actually neglect. Uh, the fourth one is actually for titles, any kind of additional titles, information, mistranslation, I, I don't care if you need actual title, uh, just put it there. So it isn't in any kind of video stream file or audio thing, so it's not messed up basically. Just put it in a separate bin and you'll be fine. And of course the last one is actually for video, in which anything that has audio and video stream or just video stream, you put in there. So, for instance, the WoW thing, uh, where, where are you WoW thing? Yeah, so for instance, that, the, the MP4, because it has an audio stream, I will put it in the video bin. So just as a reference point, if it's a GIF, like this, like, like that, I'll put it in the, um, I'm sorry, in the images file, the picture file. And if it's something that has any kind of video stream property that's not looping, you gotta use the video bin just to make sure everything well at least in my case just to make sure that everything is set properly once that's done yes we're not done yet you gotta proceed with the right sequence setting I know there's a lot of technical stuff at first but trust me we'll get into the thick of editing in a bit so when it comes to actual uh, sequence setting well the first one you gotta do is actually go into file uh, new sequence and from there you actually get this little box. This little box is excessively complicated for a bajillion amount of people, especially people that don't know actually how video compression works, how uh, affecting the timeline kind of uh, works in some fashion. Essentially what I recommend for people who don't know what they're doing, uh, I recommend either going to this box choosing the resolution they have on their video streams and just choose uh, something like AVC HD 1080p 30 if your footage is actually 1080p and if it's uh, actually anything like a M MP4 or something on these lines I actually recommend MV AVC yeah you know basically scratch that uh, anything that has kind of video streams I, I, I just I just recommend AVC HD. It just uh, sequences that just deals with interframe compressions easier because, as far as I'm aware, almost if not every single recording hardware that I know of for games is basically transforms your uh, your compression file into an interframe uh, video stream. So since there's no intraframe. I just recommend going to AVCHD because it's the definitive set and use for most semi-pro level equipment. Since most likely most people don't actually do that much with um, modification with video streams anyway of Let's Plays. It's just best if you go with AVCHD and go with the correct resolution and frame rate that your footage has. Then again, if you're going 60, it take a, the, the footage would definitely take a much bigger and I mean bigger file size like maybe well maybe not twice as much but definitely an increase so just go for 30 and you'll be fine by me and of course just choose your resolution and don't forget to also name your sequences it's very very important also you can see all the presets here of what sequence is so here uh, you have three you, you have a total of three video tracks and a total of six video tracks Three of them are standards, and the other three are 5.0 type of tracks, which really not needed. And here you can also hear the description of what it is. So if I'm going to turn here, see you can see high definition, tiny 1080p, progressive, 16 by 9, uh, pixel, progressive, 29 by 87. <laughs> frames per second images you know I'm just seeing all the kind of technical stuff and by the way audio you mainly want 48 kilohertz of data if you go any lower you might lose a ton 
of audio quality and of course when you do a let's play in general you want good audio quality because that's the main source of commentary the main source of information that you're broadening to this element of time and space and art and every kind of shit so like this now we are finally done with the technical stuff. The only other option if you don't know what kind of sequence you choose, just take your video stream, like the main one you're using, in this case it's episode 42.ts uh, that I have here, and just slide it on this box right here. As I'm gonna show here, I'm just gonna destroy that. Um, and look, it instantly creates a new sequence right here. and it basically sets it to the same settings as your actual video stream. So if you don't want to go into the sequence box and get yourself locks, that's a great way to of doing it. I don't recommend it because if there are any other modification or you don't know how your thing works, it might be of a problem. Now, starting with actual editing, the first thing you want to do is of course slide your particular part of episode right here. If you want to choose only the audio, just open it into the source right here and either slide it with this box to only get the video stream like this or only hit that spot for the specific audio stream of your file. Of course that's not what we want, so of course we're just gonna slide in everything. Now that that's done, the first thing I like to do is usually lower that to minus 20. Why minus 20? Because we have a little audio thing here and if we use it properly you can see that it's actually moving and that basically tells us what level the volume is usually I like it to be around during gameplay around um, yeah around that 24 is usually ideal for me at least as you can see here 24 uh, I guess Give yourself a margin of almost 4 debisol. I, I like to say around 4 debisol. Uh, just to say that you have leeway on how you can activate your audio. And if you're not sure what the level is, you can always go into the mixing table and now you know. See, so it's hitting 22, 22, 22. I'm gonna lower it back to. So that's how you basically know what level. You, your your file is during your timeline. Now the second thing we will obviously do is slide in the audio file. And as you can see here, there's one that is definitely bigger than the last. Let me just put that up. See, this one is almost hitting minus six almost all the time. And my commentary is hitting probably minus twelve, I'm I'd like to say. Uh, let me just, I'm just, <laughs> let me just check real quick. I'm just, I'm just tired. Prison actually is the most annoying part. Yeah, it's sitting in like not very high, like minus sixteen, which is isn't that much. So what do we do in this case? Well, we gotta boost it. Um, usually, I'd like to say you can do it from this. Uh, from this like just go into levels and then let's say boost it by six and then it's just louder as you can see here the line moved too and now it's sitting far you know far higher into the uh, audio meter which is not bad but I don't think it's the ideal way of doing it so instead what I like to do is just basically go into uh, you know right clicking uh, on the file on the timeline and then just go for audio gain and from there I say hey, let's boost it up by six and from there I have some leeway if I want to actually activate the elements um, and one part or another on the timeline because um, as you can see here I want to adjust things I, it's not like I actually destroy the the audio quality I just boost it up and it's like a ceiling that I'm not hitting that I could readjust if there's anything. So in this case, I know I'm boosting the Fuck ceiling of the audio meter. As you can see here, there's a red light, meaning uh, I've basically already hit the ceiling of the audio meter, which means uh, the the sound afterwards, after it hits that ceiling, is now excessively compressed. 
since I cannot get higher details in the voice. So essentially you lose a ton of data, which is not a good thing to have. So what you want to do is get it lower than that, but loud enough so you can hear it efficiently enough on, you know, on the screen. So what we'll do is just, you know, in this case, we'll know it hit the ceiling. So uh, let's just position it correctly, put a keyframe, then lower it by, let's say, six. Then coming over here, putting another keyframe. I said put another fucking keyframe. Okay. Actually, I'm still boosting. Yeah, okay. I'm good until here. So now I'm saying, you know, that's pretty good. And now we'll put it back up to zero. As you can see here, there's a little keyframe time. I don't need this one. Okay, so as you can see here, there's a little keyframes that tells you basically where your volume is approximately. Uh, on your timeline, and that can be used like as guide as how you do things. Hello, doggy. This is a dog that came into my room just now. Um, so like you can see now, this, the the voice basically lowers. Turbo and fuck those shockwaves, man. Fuck it. Fuck it to hell. I'm still learning the ceiling, but it's much less worse this time around. Now. That's basically how you work. Basically, you want something that's around the level of minus six at all times. Of course, there's audio limiters that can help you with that. There's actually a dynamic processing, uh, EQs, compressor that can all help you with that matter. But as of now, we just focus on the basic stuff. Uh, now that that's done, I usually like to clean the audio a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an EQ right here and slide it in. From there I get a new effect. Basically what an EQ is, is retire any kind of frequency that has any kind of disturbance in them with actually accuracy and other stuff of that matter. So what you need to do then is put it into the track into solo mode, which in turns make it so you can only hear that specific track. Now that that's done, you, you'll of course open the box here, modify, and from there you have different kinds of stuff going on. Uh, let me put the lows and highs too. Now, for that kind of commentary, you need to be precise. Well, that kind of commentary, commentary in general. So what you need to do is lower the Q uh, to be just as precise so I can give you an idea as you can see here my M1 is lowering up to that specific frequency once that's done you just launch the uh, the recording and just listen to any kind of uh, distortion in the voice so in that matter I don't care I don't care I hate the imprisoned I utterly Hey, this boss fight. Okay, so maybe you heard it, maybe you didn't. I don't care if that's the case. You basically hear a distortion, like a, a vibe of uh, an echoey, very, very not not good voice, basically. And what you need to do once you find a specific frequency is to lower that, lower the sound of it. I say minor sin is basically the max at which you can go. And as you can see, the Q, what I'm showing here, is basically the arch of how you cut that frequency. But since we want that specific frequency, uh, don't set the heart too much because you'll lose a ton of unnecessary detail in the voice, which is not good. So we'll do that for the others too. With, with all of my, my body's, body's possible, possible amount of generated, generated hatred, hatred it can produce. produce. However, However, round three of the imprison is, is, I do believe, believe the, the easier, easier fight. fight. Okay, so there's another one here. Same thing. We just lower the frequency to minus... Yeah, minus 11 is good. And same thing here. You can you possibly can manage. manage. Round, round two. two. You'll, you'll see, see why later. later. I, I, I think the first, the first two... You hear that? that that's not normal. Hits, Hits on the imprison's round, round, round three. three. Are legitimately the hardest. There's very, very slight sounds, and you need to be aware of those when you're listening to audio and equalize it. Uh, equalize it. 
so of course I'm gonna lower that and the highs and the lows I just use to usually cut uh, well, maybe not the highs, I can boost it up even, you know, just to open the mic. And the lows, usually males tend to... Usually around 70 is a good spot to just uh, cut all frequencies, because usually male voice are low-pitched. Well, not low-pitched, but just have great, uh, lower voice in general. So, you know, if it's female, just cut anything that's, I say, below 90 hertz. <coughs> and if it's a male voice, then I say anything below 70 or maybe 60, just cut it because it's kind of not unnecessary. And it's just a misuse of frequencies. Now, when it comes to highs, usually opening the mic uh, means that you can get greater details in the high pitch sound, which actually benefits the advantage compared to the lows because lows usually contain very echoey kind of voice sounds and the highs are just better to open up in general for audio sake. Once that done, usually I have a compressor that I like to put on. Uh, compressors work a little differently. Basically you want to lower your ceiling so that if there's a distortion the ceiling will actually limit it to a certain point so there's no specific distortion. It just cuts everything that's above that sound. Which is excellent. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Uh, let's just change to minus one. I think it'd just be easier. And from there, you can actually compress it the way the way you want. Round two, uh, as you can see, the waves right now. Uh, that that should give me you just an idea of how the compression will work. And you can see here actually working in your favor. Is more manageable. And it, because I put that, uh, that limit on, sucks, it will never pass it's, minus you know, one. So that's amazing, of course. Here's the big deal, uh, just short bursts of he can fly. waves will hit the ceiling, but the, the core of the voice won't be affected by it. At least that's what I've noticed. Uh, so let's just boost that just a little. I think that's good enough. We'll, we'll deal with that later. Now that that's done, Oof, I know there's a lot of technical stuff, guys, but it, it just hey, it just is, you know. That's that's what editing is. Have fun with that, because it's basically all it is. Now that you have your voice equalized properly, what I like to do is usually cut unnecessary sounds, because there's a you you always hear a little room tone behind you, and it's just not worth it to have it. Uh, usually, it's more of a distraction than anything. So any large portion of uh, video. Of, audio when I'm not talking. Uh, I, I think it's a good idea to just cut in general. I don't think I talk. Yeah. yeah, I don't. So, let's just cut that. And as you can see, there's like major cuts. If you want to go more precise, you can. Uh, just be sure though to place some fades at the end of every audio stream like this. So, it smoothens out a little bit better. Because since you increase the audio volume necessarily, there will be higher levels of room tone. So you just gotta be careful with that. Uh, also, of course, the music of the game, dialogue, and sound effects will help you uh, hide that, hide the room tone a little bit, but I don't guarantee its effectiveness. Now that that's done, oh, actually, I should return that. That's not that's not very good what I did there. So let's just restore the cuts, just to be sure that we won't be sync that much. By the way, I'm using Control Z just to you know do that properly. Once that's done, what we're gonna do is actually sync the video. Now the problem is that I with this one is I didn't put a sync point. Uh, I was stupid enough not to do it, so I basically have to get it out of the blue. Now, fortunately, I do have some kind of reference point. So what we do is gotta do that because I don't need it. And then zoom on to my timeline. I know specifically that this portion of the audio, I'm gonna play it for you. I know that this is my Wiimote, so I know that that's where I'm trying to swing. I start my stuff approximately at the same time, audio and audio, audio and, uh, yes, of course, audio and audio recording, but video and audio recording, I usually start at the same time, so it gives me leeway 
uh, a fairly decent leeway if I have any misstep in sync. Uh, of course, the episode in general is going to be desync, but that just gives me a general idea of where I do my stuff. So let me just hear that. Considering this is real time, this helps a lot, though I don't guarantee it being you know, that helpful. And once you sync your stuff, then you can cut large portions of the audio, just saying that, you know, there aren't any large, like I said, large, oops, large uh, chunks that are just room tones in and out of cutscenes of the game, because that can be kind of annoying to hear. So, let me just do that real quick. Okay, so I'm done with that, so now I can actually do some actual timeline works. Uh... No. Okay, now that that's done and everything sync, of course we're gonna start the actual editing, believe it or not. So what I want to do is actually start the episode where it should start. Usually I like to have a reference point. Of course in this, ep this episode specifically, I'm gonna start at the falling section, because before that it's just flying boring segments that I do not want. Now the first thing I want to do is actually boost this, scale the actual image of the thing to 105 because the image of my recording is like this and there's little uh, black bars that you'll be actually seeing afterwards which I do not want. So once again, just scale it up to 105, it doesn't distort the image that much or de deform it, uh, of course, you know, the image is disturb but like I said not that much it doesn't matter and since this is the beginning I'll usually like to keep it around 6 because game developers know how to mix their game and they know that 0 is the 0 point but just because of the commentary that doesn't provide that much volume differences to make sure everything is balanced like I said I, I usually like it to lower it to minus 6 just to say we have a nice balance between commentary uh, now, for example, you see here that is a bit loud. Of course, I'll change the audio of course, but you know how it is. Now, the first thing I like to do is, like I said, do that and then insert what I call my Skyward Sword intro, which I have right here, which is um, a simple video that I created also in Adobe Premiere CC, but that'd be too long just to explain. So I have custom animations and, uh, and just high roll, background, etc. And as you can see here, it doesn't fit properly. So what a perfect example to show you how to scale an image. So of course we could use this uh, in 2D effects, but honestly it would take just too long just to guess and experiment with. So what we do instead, since I know this is a full 16x9 and the sequence is set in 16x9 ratio, I'll just go uh, right click onto the time onto the file in the timeline and then choose the scale image to sequence setting or, or scale image to frame size and from there look at that it's almost fading properly and just to make sure there's no pixel deformation that I want to do or readjust things I'll just go into the scaling and choose 101. From there, we have a perfect image. And as you can sh and as I'll see in the last few frames, there's an animation. But how did I do it if it was black? If it was black right here? Well, that's because of compression stuff that I'll talk about at the end of the video. But basically, what you need to inherently know is that this is not. This basically. The black here that you see is. Um, is basically like a transparent layer you'll see in like a PNG picture file. It's the same. It's the same concept. So, I put my intro. And I'll make sure there's no flash frame with the cutting or anything along these lines. I look at the video and from there I start listening to what's happening. Of course, I can use the waveform as just a sign of how things are doing. And, I, and thus I can cut load time. So now the first thing I'm gonna do is here we see Gru's talk. And of course I don't have yet Trevor's line for this. So I'm gonna put the marker with the um, M shortcut, which stands for marker. If I can, if I can, where where is it? I'm just looking. 
Okay, you know what? Fuck it. Where the fuck is it? There you go. I double click the M. And from there, I'm like, okay, that's Groose. So we'll just say it's Groose. And from there, let me put the little duration, put the color so I don't get fucked. And from there, we have a little thing saying, hey, Groose talks here to here. Of course, I don't know it so yet, so I'll watch it. So it says, get to the temple. Of course, there's a little cutscene there. So, Tre so Trevor will basically have to speak until this point. So let me just put that, so I can put this in my notes, in my notes um, later on, so I can give this to Trevor eventually. And now we continue in the episode. Oh, it looks like Trevor's talking again. We'll do the same thing here. So this is Groose. So once again, shit. Okay, there we go. So once again, Groose, which is the right color. Just put a random time frame. Really doesn't matter at this point. Okay, so he talks about his bombshell beauty. Well, why the fuck not? Uh, around here. And there's is there anything you know going wrong with the audio or anything along these lines? I will just select it manually and slide it along these lines. I, I really don't care about these kind of stuff. I'm just going off. I'm just butching stuff right now. I am destroying the shit out of this editing. I'm, I'm mainly just doing things fast. And of course here it talks, so we cannot have the sound be at the level it is right now because if I'm playing it, you can hear shit. So what we'll do is go to this specific point location We'll choose the time frame. Uh, what the hell? Okay, there we go. And we'll put a keyframe here. We'll put a needed keyframe after the first word. We'll lower it to, uh, I'd say, 20. If there's anything, you can slide it here just to help you base yourself a little better. And I'd say that's good. Let's hear it. Hello and welcome. I can slide it all just a little bit. Hello and welcome back to the Basically what you need to do is basically basically make sure that this just slides in nicely, you know? Hello and welcome Hello and welcome back to yet another fantastic position of let's play position. See that shit is way too, you know it's not loud enough, clearly, if I'm just going to look into it. Just look at that. Welcome back to yet another fantastic edition. Minus 17, which is minus 20. That, that is just not enough. So what are we going to do? He's going to go here. Go into keyframes. Uh, around here, which is where I told by 6. Whoa, did not mean to do that. Just 6. Just regular 6. And there it just goes a little bit better. So now I can just put it back. <laughs> okay. And there we go. And now we've put dire times. Essential keyframes. Once that's done, of course, there's another cutscene here. So let's go back into the video file. Keyframe 1, keyframe 2, and we'll just put it back to minus 6. Uh, minus 7, minus 530. Yeah, minus 555. Why not? Why, why the bloody hell not? And of course, just listen to it just to make sure that it's fine. Times. That's fine. We can hear a little bit of the chair cracking, so we'll just put that here. Uh, make sure it fades all right. Times. And that's perfectly fine in my book. So of course, we'll do the same thing here. Because we fucking have to. Which is how I do it for most of the audio. Now, of course, there's tons of things here. And you basically now know the basics of how I do the episode. So that's all well and good. Um, I, like I said, put markers, put, put keyframes, arrange the audio. Of course, if, you, if you're an expert in audio already, you should have like a custom dynamic processing, some shit like it can limit the audio to a certain point so you don't actually have to deal as much with it. And I basically do this for the, for the entire episode. Just check it, adjust the keyframes appropriately, and uh, make sure the levels are nice and well. Now, at the end of the episode, there's always an end card. So, what I do is I go here, I see... Um, what do I say next time? 
Because it'll bring him a three. And I'll see you all next time. I see it here. So usually what I like to do personally, I just like to put a fade in. So what we're going to do is going to take all of that, just boost it off. Going to take it here. Right click, say just additional frame, or what, uh, like apply normal fade transition and shit. Now once we're there, and I'll see you all next time. So that's a nice phase. So once that happens, of course we have the additional hand card. As you can see here, I have my very appropriately named end card. Uh, it's in it's in Windows Media Video. What the hell is that? For? Why did I put it in that format? Well, whatever. Anyway, here you are, and from there we have the audio and video stream for the end card, which is a preset that I use for every single video. Now I don't want the audio on this one for a very specific reason, because if I play it, that's the Skyloft team, which is all well and good, but it's not the one I want. So if I look at the basic premise of this episode, I know that it's uh, basically in prison fight round 3 because I go to specific story elements of, uh, of of the game through each episode, or at least that's my through line and guy line that I'm trying to respect. So I know there's that fight, I know there's uh, like Florio, and that's pretty much the gist of it. So from that I base myself on to what I'll choose for the music of the end card, because I usually like to keep it a fairly, you know, balance, and I don't want to give an aspect of the entire soundtrack, if possible, to the viewer. That's legitimately something that I want. So what we have here is basically, I, j I just look at my option. I'm like, okay, I have this, 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 and this, and I just need to make the appropriate choice that I feel should fit the best of the episode. Now, of course, the appropriate team, if you ask me, would be the Imprison round three, but I could also put. Uh, Lake Flora if I do so wish. So let me just give a listen to Lake Floria. What's it like again? Just giving it a lesson. The good old lessoning. Uh, that's not what's playing. I doubt it is. No, that's not it. That's clearly not it. Okay, I'm gonna look it up online. Okay, so what I did is basically I just went online and checked what uh, the Imprisoned Round 3 music was, so I should have it right here, Round 3. So that's what we're going to be using as the specific uh, part for, for, you know, this part in particular. So as we see here, I'll put it into solo. Actually, I don't know. It's a bit too loud, so what we're gonna do is once again go into an audio game, just put minus six, just to be, just so it can be at a nice level. It's still a bit too loud if you ask me, so we're gonna lower it even more. I want, basically you want it lower to the same level as your regular commentary if possible, just, that'd just be nice, in general. Be nice to your viewers, man. And I'll see you all! Okay, that's that's fine if you ask me, so let's put it in, in sync it properly. Of course, we gotta put a fade at the beginning because that's a bit too... Uh, maybe... Maybe that's okay, let me just listen. Yeah, that's fine. Just, just make sure that it's not abrupt, it's kind of smooth when you do it. Of course, you want to cut the end, and from there... I'll just make it a nice long fade. Of course, I'll do it. I'll do the same for the end card, but it's already there, so there's no need to. Okay, so that's fine, so at least that's done, and from there we finally put the last bit of effort we have to into this episode. Of course I have to do the auto keyframe, but that's out of the question right now. So the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open our picture bin, we're gonna go into our picture folder, and we're gonna pull off the image of the OSC of the game as well as the music note that I've pro I probably did. Right now, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go into the window title, choose new text, and I'm going to model a text. Why do I do this? Is because I have a model that I have called music credits. 
that I use specifically for Scanwood Sword. And I will eventually chase, uh, change for other Let's Plays, but that's what I use as of now. Now, as you can see, I have one for Psychonaut, I have one for, you know, previous next part. That's when I was doing Bioshock. I should really retire that. Um, I have one for, you know, SA2, which is all things I model individually in Premiere, so they have them set. Here's one for uh, Sonic Generation Standard, when I have, you know, Fancy Shen and shit. Uh, that's the one I use for the promo of TLZ Skyward Sword. That's the one I use for a, a really fun homework that I had at school at one point. In video media, which is fucking awesome. Um, and you know, you can just choose them as, as long as you want, really. Um, but I have one specifically for music credits, and that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. So as you can see, music credits here. I'm gonna click OK, and I have my title. Of course, it's not specifically in the... You know what, I should really do that. That's just bad. That just... That's much better. Okay. So now what we have here is basically our title. Uh, let me just do that. In, yeah, that's good, that's good. By the way, here are uh, editing windows. If you want to go specifically for mixing, there's a tab for that. If you want to go into effects specifically, there's a tab for that. Uh, of course, you can change them however you feel like. Uh, personally, I use my editing tab, which has all the windows that I'm just used to in the right position. It's to rig met metadatas, uh, mixing elements, effects, uh, the source window. Uh, you know, you can you can adjust them as you please in Adobe CC, but really, uh, the standard, which is I believe effects, is more than good enough. I believe it's this one: your timeline screen, your source screen, your timeline, your uh, tools. And then your project bin, which is there, which are the five screens you'll be using the most. So really, you're good if you ask me. Of course, you can customize them as you please and as you wish. But as of now, like I said, that's not what we're focusing on. So let's put our music credits into the title bin. From there, what we have here is just the thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press T as a T as a shortcut, just you know, accessing to it faster. And now we can write whatever we want in it. So we know that the song, or at least the um, the preview, we we know the original. Uh, what am I trying to say? We know the original song. Well, not song. Just the music they use is basically called the Imprison Round Three or the Imprison Final, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. So here we have music. Uh, which I'm just gonna replace that with the imprison. Imprisoned. Unless it has one N. I don't remember. And then we're gonna put an apostrophes final. And from the and not apostrophes but parentheses. I, I don't know. I want to call it. I don't know how you want to call it. But it's the imprison final. So that's the music that we're using. And we have from, which is where we'll put the image of the OST. And we have composed by. And of course I have also one performed by, but usually the composer is also the one who composed it. So if we're gonna look into the credits of the person that I actually took <laughs> the music from, we see here that the composer are Hi uh, Hi Hajime Wakai. Shiho Fuji, Mahito, Yoka, Yokata, e Tekishahama. So we're gonna take all of them. I'm gonna do Control C. I'm gonna get back into my thing. I'm gonna do Control V, and from there we have a shit ton of people. So let me just put them appropriately. Uh, it might just be better to just do that. There's an unneeded space here. Shit. Let's put them a hundred. That's not that much. Okay, we'll have to deal with that. Uh, we'll cut it here, put it on a thing. We'll get that a little bit. So yeah, that's nicely compressed. Things look fine. Uh, properties. Let's try to add a little bit, a uh, little bit of bulk to it. No, not that yet. Maybe ten. How does ten look? Hand looks jaggy as shit. No, let's leave it at like five. And can I maybe inner borders? Maybe like two. No, that's not enough. Ah, whatever. We'll have to deal with that. 
Uh, basically, here's my official title of how I present the credits of the music, who made it, and etc. So let's go back into our editing table. We have our music credits here, we just slide it in. And from there we have our beautiful, beautiful, beautiful little text. Oh shit, that's not used properly. And there you go, and since now it's selected, I'm just gonna go and do Control D to put automatic fades at the beginning of and at the end of the video file since it's now selected. Now, from there, it's nice and well, you know, we have it here, but we want to add additional stuff. So here I'm gonna take my official game soundtrack photo PNG of The Legends of the Skyward Sword. I'm gonna click down in, Control D, put the fade, save, Control S all the fucking time, and it will save your goddamn life. Auto saves are amazing, but you know, Control S is even more amazing. Now here we have the game image, which is fine, but that's far too big. And of course, in, on the screen, you probably like watch the video like this. And the idea is just that you can recognize the cover. Once you do that, you know that this is from the specific OST. So really, as long as you recognize the image, it's fine by me. And it just needs to be visible, uh, visible enough. So let's just see our margin here. See if we're yeah. Uh, by the way, you have two squares here. Uh, the inner square is what is known as, as the save title. Any title that's actually beyond this line may not appear on certain devices because of aspect ratios or how videos are cropped. So what you want is have your text within this specific line. And the other one's not used that much during all space. It's known as the safe action uh, square, which is basically if you want a specific animation or putting a specific animation uh, composition of video or whatever you know anything that's happening on screen you want it to be in that specific square and if not the cropping of certain aspect ratio or something as a title it might just not appear on screen title is just to make sure that everything you know never put your title at the edge of the screen it looks terrible that margin is actually excessively good just to telling you how you know how you are on that thing now we have this, and now we had the music note. Now you may be asking yourself, God damn, that looks ugly as shit. Even if I resize it, the note is black and not white, which is, you know, it just looks terrible. Well, y you're right. I do agree, it looks terrible. So let's fix that, shall we? And now you may be asking, well, how the hell do you change that? All we're gonna do is we're going to go into effects, I'm gonna choose video effects and I'm gonna choose uh, color correction and then I'm gonna choose change to color so what does that do what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the pipe I'm gonna take a sample of this make sure it goes into pure white because that's exactly what the text is and I'm gonna modify it so it doesn't it, so that the transformation is based on the hue or uh, or saturation is based on uh, or even la luminosity it's gonna be based on all three if I do that the nodes are white because it changed every aspect possible aspect when it comes to color changing and from there you can also change you know the hue individually and the lightning and the saturation and how uh, the, the the feather edges of the color can be changed and etc which is not what we're doing right now we're just doing the basics which is just change to two and you can do that with basically anything really uh, if, if I want to change uh, uh, the, the OST color I, I could do that if I want to here you go and let's say I change to red now the hues are red now if I want to I can also change the light and suddenly it shifts color. Now, let's say I wanted the saturation to be affected. It doesn't do that much. It says instead of popping, just make sure the red is more poppy. If I go, go with all three, it forms the image even more because it's not completely plain like the text or the music note is. So, you can do that with basically any text you want or any kind of images that is plain. It's a really effective way to change color if you think that something is invisible enough on your screen, which is excellent. And from there, that's basically it when it comes to basic Skyward Sword stuff. Now, of course, we didn't have time to see 
inserts on this episode, but I do have a, a plan B, so let's just give me a second here. Basically showing you the basics of editing and how I do it. Inserts are fairly easy to do, just make sure that stuff is rightfully classed in your bins and then just put it straight away into your timeline and adjust them appropriately with scale, which is you can find on 3D effects here, which is fairly easy. Okay, now for even more technical stuff. Once you're done with all this, you want to go choose your entire timeline, make sure everything is rendered. By the way, if you see that uh, that red red uh, line on top of the timeline bar, it basically means something is rendered. So, as for example, if I choose, whoops, if I choose a specific section of my timeline, I can say, hey, here's what I'm focusing on. I can press enter and from there the program will render this specific part of the image and render is what actually helps you uh, use as playbacks during the programs and here's the thing Adobe Premiere CC uses a ton of CPU and to help it with that you can use this as a way to kind of counter it by doing this you essentially say this is how I've marked my uh, essential video streams elements and this is how I want them to be in some fashion so please adjust that so that you can play this much easier insert this in your memory so that it becomes easier for it to read of course there are other ways to go around this it's just the most effective way rendering also just helps having a better flow and understanding of what's going on on your uh, on your playback screen and once that's done as you can see here the light is completely different now meaning that this was rendered of course you can also go into your uh, your feed here choose this little box and then choose if you want to uh, if you want to play it and, it and display it in its full 1080p masterpiece in half of that resolution or even in the quarter of that resolution if you're going to go for playbacks or just have a slow computer in general i recommend doing a lot of a lot of renders and just having like being at the fourth of the resolution or just at the lowest point possible so that yes the resolution looks shit but if you pause it well it's in a full you know it's in its full resolution you're not losing anything you can actually change it here as you can see the the playback is at one fourth but when i'm paused it's full so since it doesn't take that much cpu to bring it back to full i just leave it there and then you can have a general idea on how it looks at full resolution and usually it's kind of beautiful once that's done once everything is done you make sure that no there's no flash frame you adjust your keyframes accordingly you go into file you go then into export media exporting is a bitch I'm gonna do it as simple as I can essentially if you're going for uh, let's playing easy configurating compression sake I say go for H264 right here click it and then just go into video window that right here not audio not effects not mix placer go video and press this button on top which is basically corresponds to the same setting as the source of the sequence what that does is pretty much like i said it just adjust is exporting uh settings as if it were the sequence settings so it was an uh 1080p progressive at 2995s at least the settings of the sequence war and thus it just mimics it here if you want to go for high quality con well just min you know just decent content in general uh conceptually i say go for like 10 megabytes of of passage of data it's just a good number it doesn't take too much space and f when it comes to mp4 format it, it just uh it's fairly light so i'd say that's good and once you once that's done i say encode uh 
that specific things with two passages. What that does is basically lower the amounts of error messages you might get from exporting your media, either through Media Encoder or Adobe Premiere Pro itself. What's that done? Just verify your audio is either really, I'd say for AAC or Dolly Digital. Uh, that's fine by me. And make sure that one, it's in 48,000 uh, Hertz kilohertz or whatever and in 30 20 kilobits that's basically what you want to make sure uh your audio is based on so once that's done just go for a, uh, that button export and if you're on media encoder you can go into a q file which basically just open media encoder like so as you can see here and from there just you know relocates the the projects with the same setting that you've placed in Premiere Pro choose your destination folder and you'll be set to go and that is pretty much how I do the basics basics of editing of course there are inserts there are spe specific modifying uh, things I didn't say a thing about compression or how I should do it uh, if you guys want more and more technical uh, mumbo-jumbo how I do specific things then be free to let me know because I, I love to talk about this stuff uh, just acquiring you with the right skills as I believe just the perfect thing to do of course I've pretty much said like a fraction of what I can possibly do with let's playing now if you think that let's playing is such an easy thing to edit uh, I think you may have changed your mind because there's so much technical shit to go about it and to make sure that everything's in order and like custom builds, animation, titles, screens, audio, choosing, cutting, fading, uh, keyframing and, and all that stuff, keying as we saw a little bit. There's so much stuff to go around and I wish this has changed your opinion at least a little bit if you've never seen uh, any kind of let's play behind the scenes. Game, Game Grumps have just done a fantastic video named How Do We Do It on the Grumpout channel which is fantastic at telling you what the basic hardware and how to go about the let's plays in very non-technical terms is and it's fucking hilarious too. It basically simplifies what I said in this entire video but through a recording process uh, down the line much easier. It doesn't tell you how to record, it just tells you what they what to use and it's fucking phenomenal. Anyway, this is gonna be it for now. I've rambled long enough. I just thank you for watching and hearing me ramble up for like probably an hour or so. This is the basics of editing. Uh, like I said, if you wanna hear more, leave a comment down below. I'll be sure to answer your question fairly easily. I know a fair share of things. Of course, not everything I know. Uh, I don't know everything, but you know, I can I can try to help you with that basically compression and everything along these lines editing inserts uh, subsequences sequences and all and all that technical mumbo jumbo. Thank you for watching. If you're still watching, I doubt that, and I'll see you all next time.